Do you need your weekly comedy fix? Relax while we visit the sitcoms you love, the jokes you remember, the characters you will never forget, and the stars that bring them to you. Sit back, it's the laugh track with Jerry Strauss. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of the Laugh Track with Jerry Strauss. Now, this is not your normal episode. This is going to be the first in a very special series because we are going to celebrate and break down one of the most celebrated uh, seasons of TV, really of all time. Uh, It's a show we've talked about before here uh, on a number of occasions, but now that Freaks and Geeks is on Hulu, available for the masses once again with its original soundtrack, it's the perfect time to revisit it, to binge it, to watch it for the first, second, third, or fourth time, and we are going to break down each and every episode for you as part of this series. We're getting it all started with the pilot, one that started it all, and there's no one better that I could think of to bring on the show to help me do that than the young lady who helped bring Cindy Sanders to life. Natasha Tucker is here on the show with us. Let's bring her on. There you are. Hey! Hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Wonderful. You're in Hawaii, right? Yes. (laughs) So that's good. It's (laughs) It's very good. (laughs) What is it like over there as far as, you know, uh, not to timestamp this, but of course, you know, this is a moment in time in history. We're going through this pandemic thing. uh, What's the atmosphere like in Hawaii? So um, I think we are the most restricted state and have been from since, you know, March 19th. Um, I think on Oahu, so each county has, has different rules and regulations because we're all different islands. So it's a little like, you know, in California, you just drive to Northern California, drive to Southern California. So you kind of can't travel between islands right now because the virus is contained to varying degrees on each island. Um, so different islands have different rules about what you can and can't do. So I think Oahu either yesterday or today just lifted some more restrictions and you can't travel here without a negative COVID test. If you do, you have to do like a 14 day quarantine. So travel's been picking up a little now, but it was like a ghost town for seven or eight months. It was, yeah, it was strange. Very strange. (laughs) Not the paradise that we always think of when we think of Hawaii, I'd imagine. But I mean, if you're going to be anywhere during a pandemic, (laughs) I mean, we had like an entire month where we had like three total COVID cases on the island or four total COVID cases on the island. So it's pretty, pretty safe. You know, when you're isolated from the rest of the world, it it, by design makes you in a pretty safe spot. So it's been good. Things are starting to, you know, like we've got some outdoor dining and uh, sports are back. I think they're back on Oahu too. So like my husband plays baseball. So that's, kind of fun thing to do on Sundays but but yeah it's been weird man <laughs> well, and it's got to be a weird time for you for all this because you know we're here for a reason we're here to talk about freaks and geeks and it's instigated like I said by the fact that the show is on Hulu and all these new people are watching it again for the first I time know. and you are just kind of a sitting duck for you know super fans and nerds and geeks like me we're going to come after you and they want to hear your <laughs> thoughts on the show. Oh, uh, well, I'm happy to share them. <laughs> Has it been crazy for you? I mean, I don't know if you're that much of a social media person, but have you been blown up as the kids say? I'm a huge social media person, but my social media has absolutely nothing to do with me. <laughs> okay. so I, don't think, I don't think people even know it's me. <laughs> That's probably best. <laughs> a little break you probably need a right? little break from it all so so that that's kind of cool <laughs> it's it's so interesting because it's been over 20 years now since the show has come out which means it's been actually over 40 years if you think about it since the time it was taking place right and 
just as relevant, I think, in 2000 to 2021. It's a truly a timeless show that I think people can discover tomorrow after listening or watching this, and they're going to love it just as much as people did 21 years ago. I just read an article that it's, Freaks and Geeks is like blowing up on TikTok. So, really? yeah, I was like, that's weird. Um, so I guess like the Gen Z, you know, 14 year olds even, which I think is just a testament to how timeless the show is. Um, you know, it's any generation's high school struggles are going to be represented by the show because it did it in a way that is so genuine and so real and so timeless. It's, you know. And it got off to such a great start. You and I went back and forth in discussing which episode we were going to discuss today. Right. And I think we both agree that this pilot, you know, just one of the greatest episodes of TV that, that we've seen. I mean, just so good. Uh, it's it's tied for my top three favorite episodes of any television in history. So that's, and I happen to be on it, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's just such an incredible, like, I cry, like you could be at the supermarket and come sail away comes on mm -hmm. and I get chicken skin and start tearing up. It's just, it's like that memorable an episode. It's like, um, I remember when we shot the pilot, you know, you don't, you don't know if it's going to get picked up. You don't know if, you know, the network's going to take it on. So you, you just shoot one episode. And I remember when we were finished, just kind of thinking, you know, man, if we never got to shoot any more of these, obviously that would suck. But because I'm like a worst case scenario person. I don't know. I don't like to like build up hope. You know? well, you're in Hollywood. <laughs> you're, you're, with your acting, you kind of have to be that way, right? Right. You, oh man, do you. Um, but I was like, if we didn't ever shoot another episode of this, at least this is perfect. Like, and then happily, we did get to shoot 18 more of them. So, or 17 more of them rather. So that was awesome. But just in itself is such a, like, it's like an hour long movie and it's just perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It's so good. Uh, you know, let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Um, you know, some of you may have uh, just come off of watching it for the first time or second or third. Maybe you haven't watched it yet. Yeah. So we're going to try and bring you through the episode. Um, and just talk about a lot of the key points of the characters. I mean, this is a world-building episode. You can never do the first over again. So this was such an important first look at everybody on this show. Uh, the first episode of Freaks and Geeks, simply titled The Pilot. Um, and it was written by Paul Feig, directed by Jake Kasdan, uh, who uh, seemed to have been a frequent director. Um, he was. Oh my gosh, he was the most fun to work with. He was such an incredible director. He was just so, like, a real actor's director. Great. That's great. And he um, he got the thing started off right, certainly. The first episode aired on September 25th, 1999. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you <laughs> for that. <laughs> Well, it, it brings up something else, too. And we're going to talk about this in uh, in later episodes as well. Uh, the challenges that Freaks and Geeks faced from the network as far as scheduling and finding yeah. an audience. Um, we're going to see it as we go to episode two and episode three, uh, things kind of started to um, spread out a little bit. I think the second episode did air a week or two later, but then the one after that. Uh, was held off a few weeks so already yeah we ha there was like the world series or something i mean yeah, there was some sort of random uh yeah some coverage of the world series that yeah. the network had never done before but just this year i mean i love the world series came... but <laughs> pardon i missed that last little part oh no i think we i think one of us cut out for a little bit so, yeah, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, this is this is a moment where you know it's that magical moment in time where the pilot airs, and nobody knows necessarily that all these challenges are coming. All we know is that this is the first time 
that this is on TV. We're going to watch it. Um, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> that's exactly what happened to a very select audience that uh, can claim that they watched this show back in 1999 and they were they were ahead of the curve because so many of us are following that years later. <laughs> yeah. um, it, I, you know, it's it's not like its ratings were bad. <laughs> like <laughs> a lot of people watched it. Really, a lot yeah. of people watched the show. It's you know, it just I think the standards were a little bit different. It, oh. we, had, we had like five million viewers. If you have five million viewers for anything today, you're like making it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just uh, what debuted. Uh, not the time stamp it again. Uh, Young Rock. Uh, you know, we just had some of the cast of Young Rock on the show, and we were just talking about the debut episode, over 5 million viewers. That was something that was advertised all, all over the place that, as right. a big win. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, hey, it doesn't matter now. We're in 2021, and we're talking about the quality of it. We can't do right. anything about the... <laughs> no, not a dang thing. <laughs> and that's okay. So let's talk a little bit about the, the show, the cast. You know, people certainly look back at this show and they say, my gosh, what a what an all star cast uh, of, of stars we know today when they were babies. I mean, you know, everybody's so talented, so honed into their character at such a young age. Um, some of the people that uh, I think are sometimes forgotten as being a part of the show, just popping in here and there. You see names mm -hmm. like Lizzie Kaplan. Who would right. later on be uh, critically acclaimed for a lot of her work? She was girl number one. Sarah, <laughs> her name. Right. Uh, Thomas F. Wilson is my favorite, and uh, you know, obviously Biff from the Back to the Future series. He plays the gym teacher, and we see him um, more extensively as the series goes on. Um, it was so weird because I went episodes, episodes in binging this thing before I realized who he was because. He was playing just such a different character from Biff, yeah. mm -hmm. and it just didn't occur to me. It blew my mind. Talented, talented actor. Um, uh, ben Foster, another mm -hmm. name that people know, certainly has been in a lot of popular projects. and He, he played Eli in this show. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely a, a unique part of his career, and I have to imagine something he looks back on fondly as well. Um, who do you remember? I, I mean, well, first of all, I guess we should ask, how did you come to the series? So, um, I had only done two other things, like very small parts and things. And, um, I had like accidentally gotten into acting and I, I guess that was to my benefit because Freaks and Geeks was really looking for, for real people to play these characters. They, you know, they didn't want, you know, the... Dawson's Creek is an example at the time of, you know, just beautiful, beautiful people. Not that everyone in the show isn't beautiful, but what they were looking for was kind of, you know, maybe a little unknown and maybe more real than what television was doing at the time. So I think that was to my advantage a little bit. Um, and then I actually initially, I was only 14 at the time. Um, I know. <laughs> Um, so I initially, I think I was going to audition for Lindsay and then I'd, at a certain point, I think I had read some things for Kim Kelly. Um, and then Allison Jones had come back to my manager and said, no, I think, you know, we'll have a read for Cindy Sanders. And, um, I had read the script and absolutely fell in love with it. I thought the title was just so funny and clever. And then when I read the script, each page was better than the previous page. And I was like, gosh, this is such an incredible show. So I would have been happy to audition for a old shoe. Like I was just so thrilled. <laughs> um, so um, I had gone in and I had met with Allison Jones, and then I, I went for a callback, and at the callback, Judd Apatow, it was at Judd Apatow's offices um, uh, off Sunset Boulevard, I think, um, and Jake Kazan was there, and Paul Feig was there, and I read with Allison Jones, and I felt like I had met her before for something, either that or she's just incredibly warm and amazing, 
Um, and I thought I screwed up. I thought I gave like the worst audition in the world. I'm a, t I'm an awful auditioner. I like my entire career. I'm like the worst auditioner. I don't, it's just the weirdest thing to me. So many nerds, like it's a horror. It's really like if it's auditioning is awful. Whoever came up with this idea, it's like the worst experience. It's like <laughs> traumatic. <laughs> I, I've never heard anyone say, man, I love auditioning. <laughs> right. Who says no person ever has said this. Um. So my horrible audition. And, you know, again, I was only 14. So my mom drove me out to Sunset Boulevard. And, you know, she's waiting out there. And I remember like walking down Sunset Boulevard, like my life sucks. Cause you know, you're 14. Right. Um, and then like Allison Jones is like running down the sidewalk, like waving papers in her hand. <laughs> She's like, Natasha, come back. Wow. And I turned around and I was like, what? And she's like, oh my gosh, they loved you. They want you to come back and, and read some more scenes and and uh i was like okay cool so sat in the hallway and kind of studied the scenes and and read them and um i think i pretty much knew at that point that i had the part I was, it was one of the coolest most exciting and weird moments of my life um That's but so yeah awesome. i totally I, thought i botched it <laughs> well allison jones is a name that I feel is brought up a lot uh, for that, especially for that period of time involved in the testing of a lot of different shows and very complimentary people, you know, she seems to have gotten a reputation for just, as you said, being this just great warm person that people kind of love on a personal level too. And mm -hmm. always very, um, always very complimentary towards talent from, you know, stories I, I've heard and also like very good at remembering talent placing them, you know, even if it's not in that moment or that situation, being able to reach back and, you know, bring you forward to something that's a better fit. But I right. mean, it looks like you hit the match right. <laughs> you hit the nail right on the head your first time out, right out of the park. Very lucky. And I have to say, um, she really makes auditioning as pleasurable as it could possibly be. So <laughs> auditioning for her is a little different than everyone else. That's good. <laughs> Good. And, yeah. you know, it's. I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. The, the overall casting of the show, I mean, everybody feels like a very genuine, a genuine fit for the role that they are playing. Right. Um, and, you know, to your point, realness. Like, mm -hmm. that's what you get when you watch it. And you can credit a lot of that to the casting. So that, that's really cool. Uh, so you you did the pilot, and then there was a big chunk of time, I guess, before yeah. you do... How long? Well, okay, you're asking me to remember something that was like 21 years ago, so. It's kind of the point of the show, but <laughs> yeah. I but, I, but I'm just saying, like, if my recollection is not 100% correct, please forgive me. It's okay. But I think I was not 15 yet when we shot the pilot, which means that we had to have shot it in March or early April. And then I turned 15 and then you wait what seems like forever. And I think that's for two reasons. One, you're so young. And of course, like as a kid, I, I think we were on summer break from school. So, you know, summer break when you're a kid is like the longest stretch of time on earth. And then when you're an adult, you're like, that's two months. Like that's literally like eight weeks of time <laughs> right <laughs> like this is a meaningless blip but for you when you're 14 like man that feels like a long time Lifetime. um so and then i think in the summertime like maybe the beginning of summer like may june i think is when they start and then fall is when they start announcing stuff and doing promos for stuff and then september was when it first aired the end of september so it's a long time, <laughs> especially when you're waiting to hear about something that's going to be a critically important <laughs> aspect of your life. <laughs> yeah, life changing, really. Yeah. Well, 
let's get into the episode because it's so good. We want to talk about some of the things that are so good about it. Um, so let's just kind of run through what goes on here. Now, this is, again, just the official introduction to everybody. Um, and it's so great the way they open this show because it's this conversation on the bleachers um, with a between a, a quote-unquote jock and a cheerleader. They're having this cheesy romantic conversation. She's saying, uh, you know, I'm ready to work through whatever it is we need to work through, but you need to communicate. I need you to talk to me. And he, he says, actually, it's just that I love you so much that it scares me. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, at first, you're, you're a little discombobulated because you think, is that how they're portraying, like, jocks and cheerleaders? I think what they're actually doing is they're saying, that's what you're going to get on other shows. And then, uh, psych! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is going to be none of that here. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, and so the camera uh, just immediately pans down under the bleachers, the underbelly, if you will, right. of, um, <laughs> of that situation. And that's where we first meet uh, the freaks, so to speak. We see Daniel, we see Nick, we see Ken. Um, we, Daniel's telling a story about he attempted to go to church in a Molly Hatchet shirt and <laughs> wouldn't let him in. And, <laughs> and uh, why, why he should have been forgiven. Because... <laughs> Yeah, because it's church. And then Nick, of course, says, hey, I believe in God. I've seen him. I felt his power. He plays drums for Led Zeppelin, and his name is John Bonham, baby. (laughs) And just like that, we kind of get to know those two (laughs) pretty well. Uh, Now, were you around to see a lot of the, uh, the filming of these scenes that you weren't necessarily directly involved in? So... 100% absolutely not. And that was because uh, I was only 14 years old and you're supposed to be in school. And California has extreme restrictions about the time that you can work. And so when you're not working, you are schooling. And if you are not in a scene, you are not on set and you are not around. I mean, unless you know you're there for the day, They did a really good job of making sure that they did all of our stuff in batches so that we wouldn't have to be at work any longer than California allowed us to be. So, yeah, they have pretty, pretty strict rules about kids who are minors and uh, are working on a set. So, no, unfortunately, there's a lot. But but I mean, of course, there was a lot that we did get to experience but that was one of the scenes that I definitely saw for the first time when you know you read it in the script um but I feel like uh there's a little more magic when you don't see something being made because I mean obviously um and so for me that that like was one of my favorite scenes to be able to see after completion because I just love it's like like that little irony and that little sarcasm of like, well, this this is how a lot of people's high school supposedly looks like. Right. And then this is the reality of the high school that you're going to see on this show. And that I just I think it was like such a great such a great moment that really I mean, I cannot think of a scene that sets the tone better for a series then and it's like one scene and it's just it's such a funny joke um and it just like what it says just really sets the tone for for the whole 18 episodes yeah, i'm trying to think of the the, the uh, time comparison of the, the height of the creek you mentioned dawson's creek before but mm-hmm. to me that's sort of the epitome of the kind of show that that this scene was talking about a little bit that exactly. overly wordy the teenagers who talk like 30 year old 30-year-olds with master's degrees. Um, <laughs> I think that was a little bit of the satire they were going for. <laughs> yeah. so. Makes it even funnier. Uh, <laughs> now, you mentioned your age. Were you the youngest? Of no. Mm-mm. No, younger? not at all. Uh, John Francis Daly is younger. a year, year younger than me. Wow. Sam Levine was two years older than I am. Martin Starr was two years older than I am. And Sarah Hagen 
I think is my age. I know Seth Rogen, I think is two years older than I am. Um, so I think Sarah and I were both 14 at the time. And then John was 13. So and then when we got going, I think he had, he had turned 14 at some point in there. Gotcha. So, so a few of you were in that same boat of having to limit your hours and, and yeah. be in school and, which yeah. I, I guess in a way it makes things easier because a lot of you would have had scenes together. So as you right. said, it, it actually them. worked out pretty well. I I got my GED though when it got picked up. So I didn't have to do the whole school thing. And then I just went to college on my off days so that I was still getting an education. So I, I still had to study on set, but it, it, I know I, I didn't have to study in the school. The things I've heard about the school trailer, like there was a trailer with a school they weren't good really <laughs> yes yeah, <it's> extreme boredom <laughs> I, I don't know if you've seen uh judd's show the netflix show love um i have but, yeah yeah well there, i mean the the main character i it's been a while since i watched it but that was his job right he was like right. on set teacher so i wonder mm -hmm. if there's a any sort of reflection of reality in, in, used in <laughs> 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 so you know going back to what we're doing here now uh we get to the let's see we have this scene where where the freaks are talking then we then we meet the geeks so to speak and i like the fact that throughout this show very rarely do we hear these terms actually used like it mm -hmm. would be kind of lame to be like oh there's the freaks there's the geeks like that's not really the show wasn't about labeling in that way right um so that was kind of nice, but you know, we meet them doing their Bill Murray impressions. Mm -hmm. This is a running thing throughout the whole series that they just love Bill Murray. Um, and who then, doesn't? Well, <laughs> especially back then. Uh, well, Alan doesn't. Alan is the one guy right. who doesn't. Alan doesn't. The leader of these three bullies. Uh, now, in this moment, we think that these are just kind of some random bullies in the school, but we, we learn episode after episode that alan certainly has a very personal vendetta against these three guys and yeah. later on we find out why um but right now it's just sort of a straight up bullying until uh sam's sister Lindsay shows up and uh kind of gets in the way of what could potentially be a beat down uh which kind of pushes away both sides <laughs> because yeah. sam is not thrilled to be protected by his sister either um well i mean it's just a little bit making it worse <laughs> yeah yeah it's only going to be worse later she didn't intend to and that's the you know she's just trying to stick up for her little brother but you know he, she pushed him away pushed mm -hmm. the bully away and that's being a teenager <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it could you know i the the theme of this show I, i'd say ongoing beyond anything else is trying to figure out who you are at any point right. in time. I think that's right. everybody's struggle episode after episode, no one more so than Lindsay. And we catch her right here, right in the apex of, I've been this smart goody two shoes all my life. I'm thinking of going in a different direction. So right. she's kind of like the punisher. She's just r running around the school, like fighting injustice at this point with her army jacket. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, doing more harm than good. <laughs> And then we get to the theme song. The theme song, of course, um, classic. The, the classic oh. beginning credits and just the sit down for the school pictures. And um, were you around? Did you get to see any of that when they created that? Because uh, the story is that it was a very quick. Uh, it was a quick process to get that done. It was, and I, I wasn't part of that. We had like these promo days, like you know, where you just came out and shot like some promos and things. And so I know they had a separate day where they, they shot um, the opening credits. So I was, because I wasn't a series regular, I wasn't in the opening credits. Um, but yeah, that's what I heard. It, and it's, it's such an iconic opening. I, and, and it, it's another thing that just kind of sets the tone for the show. It's, it's hilarious. It's, it brings you back to how much, I mean, I hated school pictures. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody who actually really likes those um and and i think it it's weird how like the show's full of those like memory triggers that just 
you know, and I think that's part of why it's so timeless. Just those little things where you're like, gee, everyone still does school pictures, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been in school in 25 years, but. No, they do um, them. They do them. Yeah. So and, I, I couldn't imagine that, it, it, that it's changed and that kids are having any different experience today. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I, I've, I've got kids. I know. Not at all. <laughs> they so, can't stand it either. <laughs> but yeah it just it's just one of those it's just so funny and so memorable and then with that song it's like i think you know i think when i watched the pilot for the first time that was the first time i had seen that and you just get chills where you're like oh my gosh i can't believe this is happening this is actually happening this is real this is happening this show has has credits this is happening <laughs> it's, it's it's the kind of opening credits that you know you go to like a netflix for instance i'm not sure uh if all the different streaming services have it you have the option to skip the, the uh, opening credits you yeah. don't you just watch them even yeah if no why would you yeah. <laughs> why would you skip that <laughs> so good and um and, and so then the episode begins properly uh and now we are in a, what will become a very familiar place with a very familiar dynamic the weir household uh where we get to meet the entire weir family uh and uh <laughs> this is weir uh, immediately starts talking to Lindsay, kind of tiptoeing into this conversation that a friend of hers said that she saw Lindsay were able to truly confirm or deny. But I think the suspicion is that she was probably smoking somewhere based on the way that she's been acting. Right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, that immediately gives Mr. Ware his first opportunity to launch into a story about somebody he knows from his past who did something and is now dead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of his thing. Um, Mr. Weir, the ultimate, I'd say the, the OG Stark, the, the first Stark in history. <laughs> he, yeah. he revolutionized it. Always a bit of a downer, if you will. Yep. But Just, you know. <laughs> it's his way of teaching lessons. Making sure everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> Just his face when he says he died. <laughs> like, I die every time. <laughs> uh, and I love the, the line at some point where, where Sam says, um, and I believe it's in uh, episode number two, a uh, little bit of a spoiler. They're having a similar conversation, and, and Sam says something to the effect of, like, do you have any friends who aren't dead? Yeah. <laughs> Or do you have any friends who are still alive? He says, only the smart one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, th this is just kind of an established thing that Lindsay is clearly maybe being a bit of a rebel, maybe pulling away from uh, being a mama's girl and a papa's girl and being that good little girl that they've known all their lives. And uh, that's changed now. Right. Uh, so Mrs. Weir then... Uh, brings up the uh, uh, the topic of the dance, which uh, is sort of what we build to all uh, all episode long. Uh, both kids don't want to go. Neither Nobody wants to go to this lame dance, which looked pretty crowded once we got to it. So I think a lot yeah. of people did go. Um, but uh, yeah, she doesn't want to go because she thinks it's lame. He doesn't want to go, presumably because, as we'll find out episode after episode, there's a lot of times where Sam doesn't quite seem ready to fit into that mold of the high schooler who wants to be near the guy. He's just a very nervous kid. <laughs> so. Yeah, I feel, you know, there's there's like some kids who just aren't ready for high school. He, he was never ready. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved to explore like in in further seasons as, as his high school career started to evolve. You know, and his character started to evolve. But um, I always thought that was so fun because Sam, because John Francis Daly, who played Sam, really was like the youngest of us. Um, and and he really, he was just a really, his character was just a really immature high school kid. Um, and I thought that was such an interesting dynamic of, of like, this so you know Lindsay of course is trying to find herself but then Sam's really trying to find himself too he's just this kid who's so immature and like 
really kind of still belongs in middle school, but maybe he didn't even have a good time there. <laughs> I think you're right. And, I, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of, like, where a kid's birthday falls that plays a part into it. Yes. Where it's like, Man, that kid was, maybe they should have held him back another year. And it's just, you know, obviously kids, uh, they mature at different times. So right. you'll get those 14 or 15 year olds who are like Sam, and then you'll get those who are a foot taller and have a mustache already. Right. And, and well, I just, I said that I saw like on Instagram, this weird picture of like the rock when he was 15 and he looked like a 35 year old muscle dude. And right. you're like, I knew none of these people, which actually isn't true. You always did have that one kid who like had armpit hair. You're like, Oh my God, where, why do you have that? <laughs> and at the same time, you also had those one or two kids that I remember that uh that just seemed like they were three years younger than everyone like they right. had hit that same growth spurt as everybody yet yep. and and just their emotional intelligence wasn't there yet so i feel like sam's character was just so out of his element in high school he just you know he wanted to quote bill murray and like watch star wars he, yeah. he didn't need any of this high school business <laughs> it's too much <laughs> poor kid and then you came along and then man, i know just messing up all the stuff over the edge poor <laughs> guy uh so, so we're uh let's see so uh you know nobody wants to go to the dance uh now we're in lunch we're at school uh and sam bill and neil are having lunch and uh here comes alan who's gonna crush sam's twinkie he's gonna continue this bullying what a thing. Jerk. Uh, unbelievable this guy just like a total like, totally he's so obsessed and again we find out why later he has like this personal vendetta against right. these three um <laughs> so he's I, I believe Alan says something to the effect of, like, what are you going to do, tell your sister? And Sam immediately says no, and instead tells, uh, <laughs> calls the teacher over. Calls the teacher. Mr., uh, so much uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be um, actually Mr. Kachevsky, played by Steve Banos, who we're actually hoping to have on this show for a future oh, episode. Oh, he's so the best. <laughs> he's so good in this show. And, uh, you know, you love the fact that he comes over. He, he clears things up. He gets rid of Alan. And then he tells Sam, just be a man. <laughs> and even he's disgusted by the fact that he was called over. Uh, um, and yeah, that's sort of the, exactly what you're saying about Sam. Like, I mean, that's what a kid would do. <laughs> right. right. He's, not, he's not worried about his rep. He's worried about protecting his neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam realizes that this isn't over uh so he's asking for help he's asking for backup and they're going to try to figure out what to do as, as a group uh meanwhile Lindsay, now she's on her own path she is going to head into the uh, lion's den so to speak she's talking to daniel um they seem to have kind of a a bit of not a relationship but you know at least they know each other enough to converse like hey how are you hey where you been um Right. So it's not like they've been totally separate. And, they, you know, that's something that I really love about the show as well is that they never portray the, the different groups of kids as being entirely separate from each other. Because mm -hmm. that's unreal. Yeah. That's like, um, you know, uh, like Saved by the Bell. Like, you know, some of those other very mm -hmm. simple cartoonish high school mm -hmm. depictions where everyone just travels in packs exclusively. Right. But, you know, everybody in high school kind of knows each other. I mean, you're. I mean, in reality, you have to take classes with these people. It's not like when the school's making your schedule, they're like, "Oh, only the cool kids can be in Mr. Weiner's science class." Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so yes, they interact. It's only natural. <laughs> yeah. So Lindsay goes goes to see Daniel, and you know, we're going to see through this episode in the next one that she. Seems to have a little crush on Daniel. She's interested in his, uh, you know, his James Frank conus. Right. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it does. So they go out to the smoking patio. Daniel says, hey, don't be scared. They don't bite, meaning the rest of his crew. Right. And uh, then we get a taste of the crew, uh, which, of course, is Ken, played by Seth Rogen. Uh, and... Um, and uh um nick 
of course, as well, who is going to be a guy who does show some interest in Lindsay. We'll see right. that over the, the episodes as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, she starts nervously chatting. Hey, are you guys going to the homecoming dance? And, of course, they're not planning to go to the homecoming dance because uh, they're way too cool to go to the homecoming dance. It seems to be a running theme. <laughs> Um, and then we meet Millie. Millie, <laughs> Millie is Lindsay's best, uh, you know, presumably is sort of a lifelong best friend. Yeah. Uh, someone, a neighbor, someone she's grown up with, uh, a very, very nice, good, well-behaved, church-going girl. Mm-hmm. And Millie is there to save her friend, <laughs> try to rescue her from the smoking patio. Um, Sarah, Sarah's going to be on this show as well, Sarah Hagen, and uh, she's been on the laugh track here on our show in general, talk a little bit about Freaks and Geeks before. She's she's just so nice. I mean, she exudes <laughs> niceness, and, and especially in, through this character, um, you can see sort of the connective tissue between Sarah and Millie. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. She's... Uh... She she's very pure when she was a kid. I mean, not to say that she's not pure. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> That's, I, can't, I mean, she, when she was playing the character of Millie, um, she in many ways was very similar to Millie. Just like such a good. She is the biggest sweetheart on earth. Um, she's just a such a sweet, awesome girl. Um, but yeah, she was like, she was for sure that good girl. And, you know, that's one of the things about, I think one of the reasons why everyone says, gosh, these actors are so perfect for these roles and they like play their characters perfectly. It's twofold. It's the casting was so incredible. And then once the writers kind of got to know us, they, they wrote to fit our personalities. Yeah, you could see that as, you know, especially certain characters like, um, uh, you know, Seth. You could see more and more of Seth Rogen, I think, as the series goes on. Right. Um, you know, almost all of you, really. So that's a real compliment to you guys and to the writers, kind of that organic working together uh, and bringing the best to each other. Um, so, you know, Lindsay is kind of in no man's land about this thing. She's... Uh, She's in a situation where everyone is pressuring her to be a math geek, which is something that I guess she has some history in uh, mm -hmm. as sort of an academic uh, competitor for her school. She's getting pressure from the guidance counselor. Everyone wants her to continue to do this, including Millie. And I think to Lindsay, this is like, this is symbolism. Like she, this is like a big thing that she wants to cut out of her life in order to try to go in a different direction. Right. Um, she sees this as, this is like the the tipping point. No right. more math. Well, how could she be cool if she's a mathlete? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> In I, her, from her perspective. I, I believe there's a point where she just says, "Can can everyone please stop saying that word?" <laughs> like, yeah, it's, just... it's like it it just all like gets under her skin because, like you said, it's just so representative of this person that she doesn't want to be associated with anymore. This person within herself that she doesn't want to be associated with anymore. Um, Sam, Neil, and Bill. They're trying to figure out what to do to avoid Alan. And then uh, here comes Natasha, Cindy Sanders. <laughs> Big appearance. She's bringing Sam the coat that he lost. What a nice girl. She uh, really is. <laughs> Until we learn some things about her later. Well, but we, we're not there yet. Spoiler. <laughs> uh, the, Sorry. But, all we know crap. about her, all we know about her right now is that she is a cheerleader, and Sam is clearly enamored with her. From you know, at first, every time he sees her, you could see him just sort of clamming up a little bit. And I don't know how many times in the series we've heard that. Oh, hi, Cindy! Like <laughs> that's the go-to. Um, and uh, they're just in disbelief that. You came over that Cindy, you know, was nice and friendly and sweet. And Sam begins to wonder if maybe he should ask you to the dance, which is sort of that 
back and forth thing again of, you know, like you said, he's not ready for any of this. Right. But at the same time, he knows he kind of likes you. Right. So he may not be ready for it, but I think at this point, the character's thinking, got to jump on this while, while the iron is hot. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, we go through, I mean, we're going to go through the whole gamut with Sam and with Cindy and, you know, the, the friend zone and out of the friend zone and <laughs> it's a roller coaster. It really is. <laughs> uh, so now we're with Sam, Neil, and Bill still discussing you uh, in the hall. <laughs> scene changes to Ken giving Daniel a, a chemistry, a, a blank chemistry exam, um, which annoys him because he didn't want a blank one. He wanted the one with the answers. Well, um, I mean, at least you got it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Open your book. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is one consistent thing about Daniel's character is uh, that's not going to happen. Like, these right. guys are very capable. And they're very okay with cheating any way they can just to continue to get by so they can hang out on the smoking. That's really right. old. But I mean, if you're going to, I understand his perspective because if you're going to cheat, like do it right, right? Like if you're going to steal the test, at least steal the test with the answers on it because you're going to get in trouble. If you get caught, you're getting in the same amount of trouble either way. Absolutely. And who wants to look up the answers when they right? get right in front of you? I mean, really, like when you think about it, looking up the answers, isn't that studying? <laughs> Wow, that is that is some great rationale. I wish I thought about that years ago. <laughs> is that, is that, I just man, you got it, man. You're you should you should be uh, you should be uh, re envisioning the entire trailer educational system on movie and TV sets because I think right. a lot of people would appreciate that line. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know how to study, so I I don't know. <laughs> well, I you know, one might say that learning their lines is a very expert form of study. So that is something that you've shown great proficiency in, based on your career. All right, all right. I got a weird memory. I just remember them. So is it like a photographic kind of thing, but just for words? No, it's for all kinds of things. I just have the weirdest memory. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you certainly have great recall about this episode. So that's really cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Fine. <laughs> uh, so, man, and again, I can't even remember where we left off every time we talked. So I'm my sorry. memory. I keep no. distracting you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's 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 absolutely fantastic. We're really enjoying this. Uh, you know, the, it, this is such a cool look into such a great episode. Uh, so I'm so glad that, that you're here to do it. Um, this <laughs> is where so happy to be part of it. <laughs> um, Kim, it's our first exposure to Kim, of course, played by Busy Phillips. Um, now she is the girlfriend of Daniel off again on again you know as as a default on but they're the kind of couple that are clearly always messing with each other always trying to piss each other off always <laughs> breaking up and then getting back together right uh, and we'll see that time and time again and we learn very early on instantly really that Kim is not happy with the presence of Lindsay this right. is like Immediately, she has a territorial kind of uh, issue with another girl being around and maybe even sensing the fact that Daniel at least kind of thinks she's somewhat cool. Right. Is kind it... of threatening for her a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, not, uh, we say that about every character we meet. We're going to learn more about their motivations later. And yeah. that speaks to just how great this show is and the fact that we did get around to getting to know all these characters more and more as time goes mm -hmm. on. Um, you know, Kim has a lot of reasons to be angry in life. <laughs> right. We'll find. Um, but uh, Kim ends up dumping Lindsay's purse over and just kind of bolting, just a little 
bit of a jerk move there. And uh, this is an opportunity really for uh, for Ken to kind of help pick things up with her. You know, they're, they're all trying to help Lindsay put her stuff back in her purse. But we start to see that Ken is going out of his way to be a gentleman to her. Mm -hmm. Like, clearly, he's got a little bit of a of an interest in Lindsay. Uh, and we talk, we go back to Sam Neill, Bill again. They're talking about how Lindsay has been dressing weird and acting weird ever since their grandma died. So now we know that there's kind of a time stamp to whatever set her off in this direction. Right. Um, and here comes Alan again. Alan comes, he says, Sam is dead. Bill sticks up for Sam. And now Alan has Bill in his sights too. So every time... Sam is called, and Sam is not at all ashamed about saying, you guys have to, like, join me on this. You have to take a bullet I, for me. It's like, you're, why do more people have to get hit? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I mean, let's be why honest. Why are you dragging these people into this? <laughs> He's kind of a coward, and, I mean, it's part of the immaturity, but he kind of, he kind of takes the low road and kind of the wimpy road yeah. every chance he gets. I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to talk bad about about the uh, fictional kid, but <laughs> it's, but it's, it's kind of true. He's not big. <laughs> no, that is true. No. And, and, you know, this is something else. I was going to talk about this a little bit later, but um, the thing I love about Alan, you know, I was I was a kid in high school who sometimes could fall into that position of getting picked on. And I remember that, you know, it was never, you know, the quarterback of the football team who was the bully. You know, those guys had better things to do. It was always a guy like Allen who wasn't really like a big guy, wasn't really a tough guy. He just had to seek out the smallest, like wimpiest kids possible because yeah. that's, that's all he could prey on. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the kids who have, the chip on their the chips on their shoulder because they've right. got nothing going on. And that's kind of again, that's Alan's deal. We'll find out more about that later. Right. Um and now <laughs> so okay. So now we're with Eli. We're meeting Eli who is um clearly a uh you know someone who is a special a special kid, mentally mm -hmm. challenged individual, never really specified exactly, you know what right. his situation is doesn't matter um he's out there asking girls to the dance they're making fun of him and laughing at him you know i bet things are a little different now in high school i would hope that things have evolved past that but i know in my day that probably would have happened. gosh you know when i was in school it was just like freaks and geeks um and I mean, it just breaks your heart. It really breaks your heart. But I feel like social media is not a great thing. But there are some, like, it's great for what it was intended for. Unfortunately, like, it, it doesn't always do what it was intended for. But it's great for what it was intended for. And I think for what it was intended for, I think kids are brought up a little bit different. Um, I think it's a generational thing too. I think, I think a lot of it is, you know, our generation, if we were to raise children, we kind of grew up in a generation where it wasn't really, it's not cool to make fun of someone with special needs. And, you know, our, our parents though, and our grandparents though, <sighs> just was it was it's just it just i mean they made fun of people for a lot of stuff that we don't make fun of people for anymore no. i mean rest in peace but the stuff that came out of my grandpa's mouth like you're like but i mean i remember as a kid being like grandpa you can't like you can't say that well, he, you know it's it's a generational thing where you know he's operating under the moral kind of the norms of his day and it right. was okay back then. So it's and not it was, like he's going out of his way to be a, a bad guy or anything. Right. And I think it was true for these kids back then. I don't think, you know, they were going out of their way to be bad kids. I'm not going to say that these kids were any worse than kids are today. Just they didn't know any better. Um, 
I like to think today that kids know better. I would hope that kids, I'm sure you're going to get that one bad apple every once in a while because there's jerks everywhere. But I, I mean, I don't, I don't think that I don't, I hope that the experience for kids with special needs is not like that anymore. I, I would hope that is the case. And certainly some of the terminology that, that would be thrown around even towards the kids or about the kids is looked at a lot differently now than it was. Oh, it's now. obsolete. Nobody, nobody says those things anymore. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. <laughs> so it's, I mean, again, I mean, even at the time this show was, was originally broadcast, this was, in fact, a period piece. This was 20 years past right. the point of what we were depicting. So right. um, it just was what it was back then. Um, but Lindsay now is going to uh, try. Let's see here. So the, the girls are making fun of them. Lindsay saves Eli, asks him to the dance, uh, which is cool because, you know, this goes back to uh, to her mom at the beginning of the show saying, hey, I'm sure there's kids out there who would love to be asked to the dance who haven't been yeah. asked yet so she's looking at it almost as go so you can do something nice for somebody else right and that's exactly what she ends up doing just mm -hmm. on her own instead of that being told it's to. it's like one of the most heartwarming scenes it's and i think it really tells you where Lindsay's character is coming from yeah it tells you it tells you instantly that she's not trying to do bad things no, she's just trying to go. She's trying to do her own thing. She wants exactly. to be free thinking, right? And then she can be trusted to to still be a good person because right. clearly she is. Right. Um, now we're back in PE, and this is where <laughs> this is this is uh, where we get to uh, meet our gym teacher friend for the first time. Of course, again played by Thomas F. Wilson uh, of Back to the Future fame. And, uh, you know, clearly, you know, we get to know another side of him later on as well, too. Right. As of now, he's just this very light kind of jocular gym teacher who kind of gets a little bit of a kick, clearly, at the <laughs> at torturing <laughs> some of the smaller kids a little bit. Like, you could tell that he he probably did some of that stuff when he was a kid and he kind of. Uh, thinks it's funny, right? Even if that's a generational push. thing too. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, so it's on. It's dodgeball. He 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 treats it like he's giving these kids a treat to play dodgeball, but instantly, uh, a number of them, including Sam and Bill and Neil, are not happy at all about this because they've just got bullseyes painted on their faces, right? Uh, and so we've got this wild free for all where, you know, they're being targeted, they're being hit. Um, and through it all, you know, we see the we see the vendetta come right yeah. through. Mm -hmm. um, and that scene is shot so brilliantly. It's just shot. It's so funny. Like, it's just shot brilliantly. It's 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 so fun and everyone gets eliminated and. Uh, you know, in the end, it's just Sam on one side and a bunch of guys, including Alan, on the other. Uh, before that, there's even a moment where Sam says, like, hey, we got to huddle together or something. Like, again, yeah, like with his friend, again. he's trying to like, sacrifice yourself for me. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I think the, I think the quote is something to the effect of. Uh, no way, kid. Like, that crazy guy yeah, is coming after you. that crazy guy is coming after you. Like, it's not even like Alan is necessarily ingratiated with the rest of, like, his team or whatever. They're just like, I don't know what this freak's got against you, but we want no part of it. Yeah. So, um, so it's Sam alone. Alan winds up. He's going for that knockout blow. Sam puts his hands up to try to block himself. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, he catches the ball. And yep. Alan is eliminated. Alan cannot believe it. <laughs> this one moment in time just uh, sent down in flames. And then, of course, Sam gets pelted by, like, 40 other balls. <laughs> right. So not only does he get hurt by 40 other balls, but he's really pissed Alan off, too. <laughs> yeah. He's only made things worse for himself. Sam can't win. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
before we go on, I just want to ask you a quick question. I'll cut this out. We've been going an hour. Are you okay? I'm okay. I, yeah. No. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. There's a lot here. Um, so, okay. So, meanwhile, Sam is licking his wounds, and now we're back to some more kids making fun of Eli. Um, they're they're trying to have like a pseudo uh, mock political conversation with him and just trying to get him basically to fit, say funny things that you can laugh at. Um, Lindsay comes over once again, sticks up for him. Uh, Eli is fine, or, or so he claims. You know, he claims to be having fun with these kids who he thinks is, are his friends. Lindsay is trying to pull him away and let him know they're making fun of you. They're not your friends. Uh, and, and she, you know, goes on to say, you know, they're only doing this because you're retarded, which uh, is clearly a trigger word for Eli himself, who gets very angry um, and very angry with, with Lindsay. Um, you know, says he's special, keeps repeating that he's special, and then ends up falling, I guess, off the bleachers <laughs> um, as he's trying to get away all upset and ends up, uh, I think, breaking his arm, yeah. uh, ends up in a sling. So, uh, you know, that's sort of a, a mid-episode uh, kind of coming to terms with yourself moment for Lindsay because now she is trying to do the right thing and ends up once again making everything worse. So tough time, I think, for her in her life as we meet her in this first episode. She doesn't. Everyone's trying to tell her to do something different. Yeah. And nothing seems right, even her own instincts at this point. Right. It's an that, interesting place to explore a character's life. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's one of the things that I think makes this show so relatable, even today, is, you know, I feel like as you explore who you are and as you figure out what works and what doesn't, I think it's something that everyone has felt at some point. And as I'm sure you've heard, you know, one of the reasons why Freaks and Geeks was canceled was because you know the network wanted the characters to have more victories right and that's that that's not the experience though that's not the experience that makes this show what it is um and and anyway i guess that was sort of my point that that you know even when people are trying to do what they think will be a victory it somehow ends up being a disappointment and and uh that's what makes it so relatable that's that's how life is especially, <laughs> especially in high school i mean nobody yeah. has a clean record in high school because you're constantly trying to screw i mean you're not trying to screw up but you are screwing up oh constantly you, yeah so that i constantly screw up today <laughs> i just screwed up 30 seconds ago so right <laughs> i mean how's that different <laughs> well i mean this is kind of a low point i guess in the episode for Lindsay. um and then we kind of move on from here uh we've got let's see uh do -do -do -do. Uh, Mr. Rosso, the counselor, he's a guy who's a lot of fun, who we get to know throughout the episodes, and he is so dead fun. set on being the cool counselor, essentially. He's yeah. trying to be Lindsay's friend. He's trying to relate to her, you know, on a first name basis <laughs> at, at this stage of the game. And he's trying to figure out, you know, he doesn't care about the Eli thing. He doesn't care about anything in the end, except why aren't you doing the math thing? this year right we need you <laughs> I, uh, it's, of course she's so irritated all anyone cares about is the mathlete thing <laughs> <laughs> i'm like I've, I've never been a teacher i'm like do they have bonuses tied to like the win loss record of their their math team like everyone seems so they they just want to win like <laughs> right <laughs> well she he gets nowhere with her, um, right. and now we see Sam, Neil, and Bill seeking advice about Alan. Uh, and uh, who is it that they go to talk to? Um, uh, Harris, 
and and um yeah <laughs> harris is a character that we will meet again throughout the series probably one of the funniest uh you know a guy who could just make the scenes that he's in <laughs> like certainly a character that just uh kind of takes over there and he's sort of this very zen if if you're going to label him a geek he's the zen he's this yeah. guy who's got this wisdom um and he's the one who suggests that you know maybe just challenge alan and triple team him and try to just do whatever you can to beat him down even if it's not a fair fight and that kind of becomes the game plan here um, yeah and and again this is just fine with sam because back up that's exactly what he's been looking for this entire time. Right. So. And now he sucked everyone into this anyway, so. <laughs> so they're, they're going to go and confront Alan on his own turf. Uh, we see Nick and Lindsay. Uh, and Nick has identified the fact that Lindsay's upset and convinces her to cut school. Mm -hmm. And uh, she goes with him, which is very unlike Lindsay. Um, I think we're probably led to believe this is her first time cutting school. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. But she agrees to go with him, not quite knowing what's in store. He says he wants to show her something that will cheer her up, which could mm -hmm. certainly go in a very, very bad direction. But instead, uh, he just wants to show her uh, his insanely big drum kit. Yes! Built and collected. <laughs> and we learn that this young man has delusional aspirations of um, being a drummer, a great drummer in his life. And he mm -hmm. doesn't care about school, academics. Um, we'll learn later that his father has different plans for his life as well. But he is running away from that, perhaps, uh, in this dedication to the idea that he's going to be a famous drummer. Mm -hmm. uh, um and he's more proud of this, clearly, uh, than anything else. I think it's pretty obvious, even from here, that he is a guy who smokes a lot of pop. <laughs> I think it's clear. It's, it's pretty clear. <laughs> Much more so than his head at any point during the show. But, uh, you know, still probably, uh, you know, we learn pretty quickly about Nick that he's a pretty genuine guy. He's got a big heart. He's a yeah. nice guy. He doesn't mean anybody any harm. And uh, you instantly can see a bit of a connection between Nick and Lindsay, even if it feels more friendly at this point. Right. So uh, Nick tells Lindsay she needs to find her passion. She needs mm -hmm. to find her giant drum kit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we're on the street again, and here comes Mr. Rosso who catches these two cutting and uh, he uh, essentially is able to now blackmail Lindsay. Uh, he wants her to do the mathlete thing. She doesn't want to do it. And now he's going to call her parents, call the weirs and also force her to uh, work at the punch bowl at the dance. At so the she, dance. Yep. Like it or not date or no date. She's stuck. She's going. Yeah. <laughs> Along with, the rest of the school inevitably yeah <laughs> everyone seems to have changed their mind about this right um, we're, we're gonna get to that actually there's a couple notes we have after the synopsis but um we go to uh lindsay and sam they're having a bit of a heart to heart and lindsay's breaking down a little bit she asked sam if she knew if he knew that she was the last person uh to be with their grandmother before she passed away yeah. and we get kind of this reveal that um, you know, her, her grandmother basically died right in front of her. Mm -hmm. And she asked her, you know, do you see a light or anything like that? And she said, no, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and it made, it gave Lindsay this perspective of, you know, her grandmother being this good person all of her life. And what was the point? There's nothing mm -hmm. at the end. Right. So clearly this is sort of that moment that set her off in this new path of maybe I've been Focusing on the wrong things in life, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need to just look. Doesn't. So mm -hmm. that's a big revelation emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Neil and Bill are uh, 
getting ready for the big fight. It's it's go time. Uh, they're on the way to the place where they're supposed to meet Sam to fight mm-hmm. Alan. They're going to, I guess, su- confront him as a bit of a surprise is the mm-hmm. plan in, yeah. in his own neighborhood. Uh, and Sam is on his way to meet them when he is stalled talking to you, who he meets in the hallway. Uh, <laughs> Sam, again, now ditching his friends. <laughs> no. He just he doesn't know. <laughs> just that, you know, I, I think at this point maybe we can kind of we can give him the benefit of the doubt that he just kind of loses control of himself and all ideas yeah. of time when he sees you. Right. Um, Cindy Sanders is his kryptonite in a way. His right. <laughs> um, so he awkwardly takes the moment uh, of this one on one conversation to ask Cindy to dance. Yeah. Uh Unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, what not kind of no? Uh, well, not a. It's well, no, a, but it's not. It's not like a full rejection. <laughs> no, but it's more of a no than a yes, but only because Sydney yeah, already she, had it. Be. Yeah, he's asking too late. She's yeah. like the most popular girl in school. She and was I, asked like a month and a half ago. <laughs> and I think we've established that this is the day before the dance, so it is yes. kind of uh, <laughs> last minute. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, there is a bit of a, uh, you know, kind of a, a consolation prize in that Cindy offers up a dance to him at the dance, um, which, uh, you know, I think Sam is right to take as well. Maybe she kind of likes me after all. So he's not totally discouraged, which is, uh, which is a good thing for him. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here we go with the fight. Alan shows up. Sam is nowhere to be found at all. And now we've got this just ridiculous three-on-one brawl. <laughs> with, I mean, this is what I love about it. You know, clearly Alan is not a fighter either. Like, he, right. <laughs> they're it's all like just the fight- sloppiest. Yeah. <laughs> like, Nobody... the physical comedy is amazing. <laughs> he... Nobody knows what to do. They're just like throwing weak, weak strikes and like wrestling moves and trying to knock <laughs> each other down. And then Alan tries to play it cool, like I'm going to get you, but next time the type thing. Right. As he's getting on his bike to get the hell out of there. Because right. <laughs> it's it's clearly a fight where there are no winners. I, I think. No. <laughs> no. And then. Uh, the dust settles, the smoke clears, and here comes Sam, who has missed the whole thing. Right. Uh, but but does genuinely appear to have been rushing to get over there. So, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. But uh, the, the, the battle may be over, but the war certainly continues. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so now, now we make our way to the big moment. Um, we're at the dance. This is that scene you talked about, you know, I'm sailing away, uh, something that still conjures up emotion within you, within anyone who's really seen this episode. Yeah. Um, you know, I know for me, you know, I get that YouTube video suggestion popping up a lot, just that scene and mm-hmm. can't help but watch it. It's, yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a great song for it because it's long enough that it's this extensive scene. A lot of stuff goes down all right. within this song. Right. Beginning to end. Exactly. Um, and everyone's at the dance now. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay is dishing out punch alongside Millie, who is just totally in the dance spirit. She yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> no date for Millie, but this is. So cute. Uh, you know, as we'll find out later in the series, she's not a- exactly single. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, for now, she's going stag. She's being a wild woman, and she's uh, doling out some punch with that dance that you just did very well, by the way. I see. It's like my favorite part. I get. I love it so much. <laughs> it makes me smile every time. She's so cute. <laughs> it's so, so like clear. I just want to rock on and with her. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, she should have. It would have been so great to put out like a. I don't know. I'm thinking back to the 80s, something, you know, time appropriate. You know, everyone was putting out those, like, 
VHS tapes, you know, how to dance with this character or that, you know, in character. Just like yeah, a, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> or like a Richard Simmons, like workout routine, like incorporating yes. Billy style. Yes. Uh, Billy aerobics. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, but Billy's having a great time. Lindsay, not so much. Um, Mr. Rosso, he's distancing himself a little bit from this Lindsay thing now. He says, you know, I think you should probably just call me Mr. Rosso. Now. Yeah. I'm, I'm your teacher again. Um, but, you know, he, he, he says something that does kind of stick, which he says, you know, if, if the worst thing in your life is that you have to go to a dance, well, I'd say you have a pretty good life. And, um, you know, you could see the truth in it. You could also see how uh, how kind of detached Lindsay is from really understanding that concept at that yeah. point. Yeah. She's got a lot of other things in her mind. Um, and uh, we see Eli. Eli is, uh, you know, hanging out. He's at the dance uh, in his sling. And um, Lindsay says, I think I'm going to ask him to dance. And uh, she makes that big gesture, which is a gesture in and of itself, simply because she certainly did not want to be dancing at this dance at all. Right. So she goes over, um, you know, obviously he's possibly in a position where he's still not thrilled with her, but right. um, he's excited at the opportunity to dance and dance and they make up, they make good. Uh, and then at the same time, actually a few minutes before that, uh, we see Sam make his move. And right. Sam sees Cindy. This is your magical moment. Um, comes, approaches you, asks for his, his dance that you promised him. And uh, this is a cool moment because the Cindy character is so relatable as well because she's so nice. I mean, at this point, we don't get to know her too deeply yet, but she's just so... Um, just so sweet mm -hmm. that it it's tough you have to believe you can understand how uh sam wouldn't quite be able to be sure does she like me is she just being friendly is she right. being nice um right. it's all kind of on the table right so does she just like everybody is she it, just you know yeah exactly yeah. very confusing just, for him <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I mean, and it's not like he has the experience or the know-how to kind of... Navigate that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you guys go out on the dance floor. This is, you know, and this is so perfectly timed. You know, the um, the earlier part of I'm Sailing Away, which is basically a slow dance, mm -hmm. um, slow tempo song. Uh, we'd, we'd seen him mention earlier in the episode, I believe, it needs to be a slow dance. Like, I need to do a slow dance. Yeah, he's like, gotta do it. Yeah. But that's the but, song he waits for. Yeah. And but he doesn't know the song. He doesn't, <laughs> wait, yeah, clearly he is not prepared for where the song goes. All he right. knows is that he's not capable of actually, like, moving and grooving, or at least right. not brave enough. Right. Um, so, yeah, of course, as soon as you guys get on the dance floor, here we go. The song uh, tempo picks up, and uh, now you are urging him to to get moving like yeah. let's dance for real. Um, Come on, Sam. <laughs> what was the experience like i mean just this whole scene i mean there's so much going on that was kind of interconnected and then at the end you had like this giant shot of like everybody dancing and everything going on at once how big of an endeavor was that it was big yeah it was it was a pretty big production um all those kids were there i mean though that was a full gymnasium we did shoot it in a gymnasium um we were able to shoot some different parts um at different times you know any you know anytime the camera cuts you you have an opportunity for a different angle or a different scene or a different like sometimes one cut of a camera like one shot can take you know, four and a half hours or longer to shoot just one little segment. So, you know, we did every, all of that was kind of done separately, but um, if you'll notice it's one continuous shot from when they walk out on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. 
so um that was a little challenging to shoot it was really fun so we it, you can't have like the music is afterwards right so they they put music in in post-production so we kind of had to um you know you get what like talked through it um so that it was actually it was like the most fun scene to shoot because you know we start walking and the music's going and and uh you could see on sam's face he's just like oh my gosh I, like uh, what do i like i don't know what to do here and then you could see on cindy's face she's like what are we like what are we doing here <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> right. And then just the timing of the song changing into the fast part of the song. And then the realization of like, come on, like we're here. Like you have to dance now. Like that's what we're doing. What a metaphor. Um, what a metaphor. Because, I, you know, I think Cindy was always a little bit ahead of Sam. And was always right. like, come on, we're supposed to be doing this now. That's exactly what played out here. Right. Exactly. Um and so it was just such a it, it was just such a beautiful fun scene to shoot like i literally have goosebumps talking about it um just so many good memories like it, it was easily one of the most fun days i've ever had on a set we were just kids talking and dancing it was <laughs> it was so fun and like i don't know there are some times where you are so young that, you know, you don't realize what you're doing or they don't, you don't realize how important what you're doing is going to be. And then there are other times where, you know, we were shooting it and I was like, wow, <laughs> like, wow, I can't, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. I can't believe I'm part of this right now. And so that was just the feeling. And, and I don't know, I feel like it kind of gets conveyed by all the actors. I think I kind of feel like we all felt like that that day. And I, I feel like you can see it in the scene, if that makes any sense at all. You can see it, you can feel it. Like, you yeah. can just feel kind of the, the, the love and the passion, you know, even just, you know, as far as just the camera work, just everything was done yeah. with such like perfect, like care and attention and love. To yeah. make that just a timeless deal. Um, yeah, that's so cool. Um, and, and that's really how we end it. You know, we've got we've got Lindsay kind of finding a place of contentment for that moment in doing something good for Eli. We see uh, Sam stepping up to a point to at least be able to man up and, and get through this dance with you. Um, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you guys seemed happy. Yes, <laughs> and um, we also have a shot. You know, we're going to talk about this in a moment. We see Kim looking on, um, and she just seems to be confused as to how this new enemy of hers, at this point named Lindsay, is now finding her way back to happiness once again. Right. Like, what's the deal with this girl? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, again, just this great giant shot of this entire dance and yeah. this entire world that these weirs and these people that are now in their lives they're all kind of navigating together mm -hmm. and they're all just kind of dancing the night away and mm -hmm. that's a can't think of a better way to end an introduction to this little world um than, than how they chose to do it so that's cool. why it's just such a special episode from start to finish it, and it, and it could not have end it could not have begun any more perfectly and it could not have ended any more perfectly and everything in between was perfect too <laughs> <laughs> um let's just run through a few facts real quick to wrap things up here of course the sure. episode soundtrack um such an important part of this entire series yes um, and uh you know so great that they're able to maintain that even you know from the days on netflix now the show available on hulu um right. in its original form both in video and audio you can see and hear everything that you should so that's mm -hmm. cool. um running with the devil from van halen that's the music that we hear when we first are introduced to the world under the bleachers mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh the quote-unquote freaks 
Uh, I'm all right with Kenny Loggins. Uh, you know, that plays a part in the episode as well. Styx has two tracks on this uh, episode. Uh, their song Renegade, and then, of course, right. uh, probably the most famous musical sequence in, in the entire series, Come Sail Away, right. Final Dance. Um, trivia. Not really trivia. This is more of just food for thought. Why is Kim at the homecoming dance? That's an interesting thought because, you know, she, along with, uh, you know, her crew, they all said, no way we're going to the dance. And yet she is there looking on to watch right. these dances. So, you know, I'm sure there's some fan fiction out there. Somebody has figured this out and <laughs> created a whole backstory for it. Right. Um, yeah. Why is she shown observing Lindsay and Eli dancing. The freaks had no interest in homecoming, and Kim was not really friends with Lindsay yet, resenting her hanging out with them. Nick can also be seen in the background. That I didn't notice, but um, his attendance could perhaps be explained by his attraction to Lindsay. So mm -hmm. this person is speculating that Nick is already stalking Lindsay, which may mm -hmm. in fact be That's high school. That's what you do. Yeah! <laughs> It's okay. It's kind of legal. Um, uh, so just some notes of, uh, you know, questioning of some very minor details of the episode. It's highly unlikely that 14-year-old, the 14-year-old geeks would have seen the rated R Caddyshack when it was originally released during the summer of 1980 because it didn't become a hugely quotable comedy classic for Gen X kids until it was on HBO in 1982. And later when it was available on VHS. That is some attention to detail. <laughs> yeah. I think it's probably easy to explain that away in that it is very clear that these kids are Bill Murray super fans. Yeah, they're like obsessed. So they would have gone out of their way to find a way to get into that theater, uh, regardless of their age, to see that movie. So I think, I think that it, checks out. Growing uh, up it was not difficult at all to not only buy one movie ticket and just see multiple movies throughout the day, mm -hmm. but to buy one movie ticket and then go across the hall yes. into the different movie. One for Bambi, please. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, and like no one... Who checks like the other 17 year old guy making the popcorn? Like no one cares. So I'm not I, I'm not giving credibility to that. It's really, really easy to not see them. I'm sure it even is still now. I'm sure. Probably easier than ever because some movie theaters are almost entirely automated. So there's not really There you go. <laughs> there you go. I don't um, know. I haven't been to a movie in like over a year. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Now things are a little different. But <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so just I'm just saying it's like 100% plausible and reasonable that they would have gone to see this multiple times. They probably even made a friend with one of the guys who works there because they went to see it so many times I to where I he'd be like, all right, come on. Yeah, here comes the crew. <laughs> that's what that's what I envision. So no, I'm not giving credibility to that. Ooh. Sorry, uh, I made the computer go. <laughs> oh, uh let's see. There's a plastic Heinz ketchup bottle on the Weir's dinner table. This is impossible because Heinz ketchup was only sold in glass bottles in nineteen eighty. The plastic bottle was not introduced until nineteen eighty three. So what are you going to do? This is an alternate universe where... Damn. <laughs> they got him. Uh-huh. Yep. The whole thing is going down now. The whole going down. A few more of these and this show's going to get canceled. Uh, <laughs> Harris. <laughs> Harris was originally... This is interesting. I, I wonder if you have any recollection of this. Harris was supposed to accompany Bill and Neil to the fight against Alan in the script. But there was trouble getting the actor uh, yeah. yep. uh, across the border. He was Canadian. Uh, that mm -hmm. was Stephen Lee uh, Shepard. Stephen Lee Shepard. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So his character uh, was bumped for that one. Yep, 100% uh, verified. Wow. Was that like a constant issue with him to get him on set? No, I think it was just that first time. Gotcha. Something with 
visas and I don't know the details of it. That's just what I imagine. But yes, I completely remember that. Yep. Yeah. Unbelievable. The little things. Um, Which is I mean, an episode title later. <laughs> there you go. Man, we have got a we have got a fun journey ahead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, for now, I, I, I mean, I, I feel like we've covered this episode uh, with the detail and the uh, the love that it deserves. What do you oh. think? Any, any final thoughts or anything else uh, come to your mind about this experience? It just so fun to kind of go through it bit by bit like this. Um, it's just, it, it's a magical piece of film. That's, ooh, we did shoot on film. We shot on 35 millimeter film, which is kind of a neat little fact. Um, but it is a just, it's like lightning in a bottle. It, it's what, I know that's so cliche to say, but it's just so magical. Everything came together so perfectly to make just this perfect little time capsule. And it's, it, I think that's why people love it so much still that it's undeniable it's just it's just incredible television it's incredible filmmaking so i feel so lucky to have gotten to be a part of it and to experience it and will forever be grateful and it it does not escape me how incredibly special it was to be part of that so yeah <laughs> I, I think Getting it's very, very special. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I <laughs> I want to go back to that early. What was that earlier quote? The um. Oh my goodness, from from the very beginning of the episode, I, I want to compare the cheese here. Um, oh, yeah, I love you. I, I guess you just love this episode so much that it scares you a little. It scares me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well. Look, I, I mean, I, I think it's undeniable just how great this piece of TV is, this one episode. Um, it extends to the entire series. The yes. whole thing is great. If you guys are just starting to explore the show, um, you know, we hope that you're checking us out kind of concurrently with doing that. You know, binge the show. Use us as your companion piece, your after show, because we're going to be talking about every single one of those 18 episodes. Uh, and this is a cool way to hear so much more, get so much deeper into them from, you know, the amazing people like Natasha who were a part of that experience and help help make it possible for us. So um, thank you, um, first and foremost, not only for helping to give us Freaks and Geeks, but also for being here with us to uh, to make it even better. Well, thank you so much for having me thank you for thinking of me and it was absolutely my pleasure to share just a little bit about my experience with the show and and uh i hope anyone who hasn't seen it can fall in love with it and anyone who has seen it can fall in love with it all over again and god again, i'm scaring myself <laughs> of course the series is on hulu right now as we speak on demand for your viewing pleasure and of course you can check out more of our episodes, more of our series talking about Freaks and Geeks right here, LaughTrackPod.com, where you can find everything that we put out, Freaks and Geeks and beyond. And uh, once again, thanks so much. It's been so great. Thank you. Thanks, Natasha. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. This was super fun. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you. Just, I think you did an awesome job kind of taking people through through the episode and 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 getting them to love it the way you do so thank you, thank <laughs> awesome. you too. i appreciate thank you, thank it so you. much all right hey, all right night. you too so nice to meet you i'll let you go take care bye